Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, this is my stock gearbox controller in my car, and it has a load of software issues that Mercedes have never fixed. And quite frankly, I'm getting sick of its issues. So, I built this, a custom transmission controller. So, for some context on this entire project I've been working on for a while, most of the viewers of this channel already know that I own a Mercedes C-Class from 2006, which comes with the 722.6 5-speed automatic gearbox by Mercedes-Benz. My main issue with the car though is that the gearbox has started to show signs of wear and tear, which include jerking of the torque converter whenever it tries locking up, slow shifting when cold, and extremely harsh shifting or flaring as well when the gearbox is warm. Now, whilst I originally thought the flaring issue was down to a hardware fault in the hydraulic valve body, caused by a component called the overlap control sleeve. I replaced that during the March 2020 lockdown to a new updated part by a company called Sonax, which claims to fix the issue, and it didn't fix the issue at all. And since then, I have been adamant that this is in fact a software issue with the stock TCM controller, rather than it being actually something in hardware. So for the past year and a bit, I have been working tirelessly to create something that no one else has done before, which is a 100% open source custom TCM for the 722.6 uh, automatic gearbox with full CAN bus support so that it should hopefully work in all the Mercedes vehicles built after 2000. So to start with, let's have a quick look at the stock transmission computer from my car, codenamed EGS52. This was fitted to all production vehicles with the 722.6 uh, gearbox produced from 2000 to 2008, which includes the C-Class, the CL-Class, the CLK-Class, the E-Class, the S-Class, the ML-Class, the SL-Class, the SLK-Class. Also, cars which included this transmission computer, which were not made by Mercedes-Benz, include the Dodge Magnum, the Dodge Charger, the Dodge Sprinter, the Maybach 57 and 62 series, Chrysler Crossfire, Chrysler 300, the Jaguar X308, the Jaguar XK, the Porsche 911. As you can see, this controller was used in a lot of vehicles, so now let's actually have a look at some of the features of the PCB itself. Alright, so this here is the EGS52 controller from the 2000-2008 Mercedes vehicles. Ignore the two connectors here, I have these hooked up to power normally just for desk testing, but essentially this is where the stock TCM connector would be. I have that connector over here, which looks like this, and that would normally plug in to where these soldered, and then that lets it connect to the car. All that's important here is you've got two power um, ports here, so you've got battery and ground, and then on here you've got ground solenoid connections, solenoid power and some sensors and more solenoid connections. Anyway, as far as how this controller works, you have a Infineon proprietary CPU here. I'll put the data sheet up on the screen. Then you have these two uh, chips. I don't actually know, I can't actually find any data sheets on these. All that's on there is ATM36N. Um, but I believe these are some kind of PWM driver chips and these basically drive the solenoids with a PWM signal. Uh, based on what the CPU is requesting. Also here you have a simple CAN driver chip, which is how the uh, controller here talks to all the other ECUs in the car. And what's important to note here is that you only have two current sensor resistors. So as far as I can follow these traces around the board, first also to note is these traces are really, really thin for solenoids, considering they're meant to be drawing like three amps. That seems to be very, very thin. Um, but anyway, these two resistors here allow the controller to measure the current of only the shift pressure solenoid and modulating pressure solenoid. Now, what's interesting to me here is that I don't understand why they haven't put a third one in for the torque converter solenoid, since that's also PWM controlled. And the torque converter solenoid is essentially responsible for locking up the clutch in the torque converter. And I theorize that some of the reasons why that why sometimes people report that the torque converter jerks the car is because the controller has no means to measure the current draw of that solenoid because uh, it can only draw it can only measure these two there is no other current resistors on this pcb so yeah that's just a quick look at egs 52. so yeah the pcb is not perfect on this controller but you know i'll grant it it's old it Anyway, back to the issue that my gearbox actually faces, which has been bugging me. So, the term flaring is a term used when the gearbox fails to shift correctly, 
during upshifts and the RPMs will rise during an upshift before falling back down to where they should be. As mentioned earlier, even with the new Sonics parts fitted in my gearbox, this has not solved the issue entirely. And therefore I am convinced this is a software issue, since I theorise the gearbox controller actually stores two pressure maps, one for when the gearbox is cold and one for when the gearbox is hot. I theorise this because the flaring issue I am facing only seems to happen once the gearbox temperature has, has gone past 65 degrees celsius. If this was due to a physical issue of the hydraulic valve body, I would expect this issue to gradually get worse as the gearbox got hotter, rather than suddenly appearing as soon as it reaches a certain temperature. This issue is actually so bad now with my gearbox that as this video now shows, it actually enters neutral with light throttle application during gear shift since the RPM jumps so massively that the TCM can no longer work out what gears the gearbox is actually in anymore. Now, starting in 2008, Mercedes updated the EGS-52 controller to this over here, called the EGS-53 controller. Like EGS-52, it was also used in many, many different vehicles, but I thought I'd just very quickly run over some of the features of this PCB. This is codenamed EGS-53. So, what's interesting about this is the way they've changed all the solenoid driver circuits. So, first of all, this is a multi-layer PCB now. It's no longer just a dual layer like EGS-52 over here. They've got a ST mains processor here, which I believe does all the normal controlling, like the Infineon one over here. But they've ditched these two ICs on the EGS-52 control to drive the solenoids, and instead are using individual MOSFET circuits. And again, this little Siemens processor down here, I think is what is responsible for measuring the current from all of, uh, keeping track of the solenoid consumptions and whatnot. However, again, on this controller, there are only two current central resistors. So, again, this controller can only measure shift pressure solenoid and modulating pressure solenoid. Uh, but overall, the PCP seems to be a bit simpler than EGS-52. So, yeah, this is a minor design change. The actual software on here is completely different because it's running on a completely different CAN network or CAN architecture to EGS-52 on the older cars. So, to very quickly recap, these are the following issues I feel like Mercedes have gotten wrong with both of their controllers. 1. Not measuring the current draw on the torque converter lock-up solenoid, which can result in harsh locking up of the torque converter, causing a jerking motion in the vehicle. 2. Not allowing the TCM to adapt to changes in gearbox temperature smoothly. And number 3. Not allow the TCM to easily be updatable in the future if they wanted to fix the controller's software flaws which would extend the gearbox's life, and therefore the life of the car itself. That there is just a very quick summary of some of the main issues I'm trying to fix with my transmission controller. I will now put a very quick list up on screen of all the other issues which this controller has, which bug me. So with the history and background of this project out of the way, let's now have a look at what I've been up to. Over the past year and a bit, I have learned how to design circuits, and eventually with some easy-to-use software called EasyEDA, I have been able to design multiple PCBs for testing with. In total, I have built one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight PCB revisions, each time learning something new as I break something. So yeah, it's been a tough, long and expensive journey to finally have a working controller. I would like to take this moment to thank everyone who has helped me over the year with improving my circuit designs, as well as Patreons and GitHub sponsors. Now let's look at some of the features of my PCB. So finally, this is the EGS-53 controller, as I've just shown, and this is my one. So I'll put them side by side here so you can see. So first of all, we are using a ESP32 microprocessor with a USB-C port for programming and debugging. So that's very useful. We've got a little speaker here because I do feel that rather than the controller entering limp home mode it, um, and you not knowing that it's entered limp home mode, I'll have the little speaker here which can beep. Uh, so you should be able to at least hear something similar to like a motherboard post beep if something goes wrong. Also to note here is unlike EGS 53 and 52, which only have these two current sense resistors, we have current sense resistors on each one of the six solenoids here, with this little IC here, which is a gain amplifier, so that it can amplify the voltage drop along here to the microcontroller, so that it can keep track of the current draw of each one of the solenoids here. So, 1 to 2, 4 to 5 shift solenoid, 3 to 4 shift solenoid, modulating pressure, 2 to 3 shift solenoid, shift pressure, uh, and torque converter. Uh, pressure. 
Um, also on here, as so you can clearly tell, I have spent loads of time labeling everything on this PCB so that it's very easy for people to understand what goes where. Um, the MOSFETs I'm using here are the exact same MOSFETs found on the UGS53 board because they can handle 50, up to 55 amps and have a very low gate threshold, meaning that ESP32, which only can deliver 3.3 volt IO, can drive the solenoid gates on here to open and shut them. Also, unlike the other controllers, which are using these like linear voltage regulators to step down the 12 volts to 5 and 3.3 volts, I am using buck converters, which actually gain, uh, gives the controller a lot better efficiency, as I shall now demonstrate. So we see 12.49 volts coming out of the board, and we have 0, 0.00 watts being drawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with EGS52. Okay, so with the EGS52 board plugged in, let's have a look at how much power that draws from the power supply. So we're drawing about 1.32 watts, 1.29 watts. Okay, we'll call that 1.3 watts. But essentially at idle with nothing plugged into this board, it's drawing about 1.3 watts of power. Now let's compare that to EGS53, which is the updated controller by Mercedes-Benz. And actually this one draws more, it draws 1.49, well nearly 1.5 watts. And then finally, let's compare that to my TCM at idle. And with my TCM plugged in you can see there we're literally drawing 0.2 watts of power, even with the speaker making a beeping noise. There you go, you can hear that. So yeah, this can... Turn that off now. So yeah, this controller is way more efficient than the stock ones from the vehicles and also I should probably quickly mention before anyone starts screaming at me saying where is my fuse, where is my reverse current protection circuit. No fuse is needed on this board if you noticed all the other boards also didn't have a fuse on them that is because this car is this module is plugging directly to where the stock TCM plugs into power which is the front signal acquisition module of the vehicle which has a 10 amp fuse in it for it so it's not needed. And regarding reverse current protection, each one of my 5.5 and 3 volt circuits have their own reverse current protection uh, diodes here. And the MOSFETs have their own diodes here down at the bottom. So everything is individually protected against reverse current rather than the entire board as a whole being protected by reverse current or well, reverse current protection. I just thought I'd mention that. And now finally, let's quickly compare the specifications of all three controllers side by side. Feel free to pause the video here and compare each controller. As you can see from this, my TCM is far more powerful than both EGS52 and 53, and also supports current monitoring on all the solenoids. It can be easily programmed using the USB interface on the board rather than requiring signed firmware and a JTAG connection. Also, I plan in future to create a Bluetooth phone and PC application that will allow the user to customize the TCM to their heart's content and also diagnose it. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now, very quickly, to those of you who want to spam the comments section of this video asking me why I don't use a pre-made solution like Offgear, well, hold your horses. You see, these existing aftermarket solutions are great for these gearboxes and older cars. However, starting in 2000, Mercedes required these TCMs to talk to all the other ECUs in the car using CAN bus, which means that these older TCMs from the likes of Offgear won't work in the car. In fact, the engine will just enter limp home mode because it can't talk to the TCM anymore as they don't support CAN bus communication. However, due to my knowledge of the CAN bus architecture of the newer Mercedes vehicles, just look at my custom infotainment project, I'll leave a link for that in the description, I've decided to challenge myself to create a TCM which supports the entire CAN network of my existing Mercedes from 2006, and then possibly extend support to the EGS53 module. So far, I've made some progress with CAN bus communication and basic I.O. functionality on my custom controller, but this is not final at all, just experimenting. Here are a couple of clips just showing some of the things that I've been up to. Firstly, here you see my custom TCM playing notes from its speaker. This was a basic check for me to ensure that the RPM measurements from the N2 and N3 speed setters in the gearbox were working fine and without issue.
Secondly, here you can see me playing with the shift profile button and the gear position selector. And the instrument cluster is correctly showing that information, changing gears and changing profiles. That information is being sent from my gearbox TCM over canvas to the instrument cluster. Again, I'd like to reiterate, those were just draft concepts of mine on the TCM board to prove that it works fine. In part two of this series, I will go over the actual coding process of this TCM, which I've just started work on. So stay tuned for that. I hope this has been an informative video and I look forward to reading your comments down below. Please be sure to let me know if you have a 722.6 gearbox, which has other issues other than the ones I've already described, because I'd love to see if they are fixable in software. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye! Press this, watch the display.